What's up guys? Today we're looking at another hacker rank problem. Uh, this problem is about the magic square. Um, I've already read through the problem statement here because I wanted to be prepared a little bit to just kind of explain it rather than reading it along with you guys. Uh, so what's going to happen here is we're given a 2D array that represents a square and we have to convert it to a magic square with the least number of steps possible. Uh, in this case, a step would be adding or subtracting one to any of these numbers. Um, so just a little bit about magic squares. They have several properties, but the main property that you need to be aware of is that each individual row, column, and diagonal need to be equal to the same number. It's called the magic constant. And for a 3x3 magic square, that number happens to be 15, which you can see by adding up these numbers here. So 8 and 5, 13 plus 2 is 15, 6, 5, 11 plus 4 is 15, and so on. After looking at this for a little while, uh, you can see a couple of patterns start to emerge. First one being that 5 is always going to be in the middle. Uh, it's, it's kind of the center point or the rotation or reflection point that we're going to be looking at. Um, 8, 3, and 4 are always together. 8, 1, and 6 are always together. 6, 7, 2, and 2, 9, 4. Those are always all together. Um, so if we think about the possible permutations of this square, um, we're going to have a horizontal reflection, we're going to have a vertical reflection, we're going to have one diagonal reflection this way and another this way. So that's four different transformations that we can make and they're each going to have a counterpart to them. So we're going to have eight total configurations for this square. Um, if that didn't make much sense to you, uh, you can look up a little bit about magic squares or you can just go to Google and say, you know, how many 3x3 three three magic squares exist. And the answer is eight. There are eight possibilities. There are reflections slash rotations of one pattern. So in this case, uh, we're not so much worried about the runtime complexity of this because it is a small problem, uh, but the problem becomes much easier if we have robust data. Uh, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and copied out the eight different configurations into a double int array, and we'll see that here. And what we're going to do with these is we're just going to test our magic square against all of these possibilities and get the score for each square being the difference between each individual number and the actual number. And then we're going to take the minimum value uh, that we find. So we're going to need a minimum value, so int min equals integer dot max value. And the reason I'm using max value there is because I know that just about anything that we throw at it is it's going to be greater than that. So uh, let's start looping through. Go int i is equal to zero i is less than squares dot length i plus plus. And you may be wondering why I'm not looping through s. And truth is, it could be done that way. Uh, but since I constructed this array, I, I just feel more comfortable iterating through that. Uh, so what we're going to do is define a total variable and then start looping through the individual squares themselves. So int j equals 0, j is less than squares sub i dot length, j plus plus. And we want to add to that total the absolute value of s sub j divided by 3 sub j mod 3 and subtract that from or subtract squares sub i sub j from that uh, so if you're wondering where I got this j divided by 3 and j mod 3 uh, if you think about us having a square we have the individual indices which are 0, 1, and 2, 0, 1, and 
So we would need to go 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, then 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 1, sorry, this is a 2, 2, 1, nope, 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2. So those are the indices that we need to look at in our S array. Uh, so J divided by 3, it's integer division, so it's always going to be a whole number, and it's going to floor that number. Uh, so what happens here is we get 0, so we have 0 over 3, which equals 0. Uh, we have 1 over 3, which is still 0, and then we have 2 over 3, which is still 0. Then we get to 3. We have 3 over 3, which is 1, 4 over 3, which is still 1, and 5 over 3, which is still 1. Uh, so what's happening is each time we go 3 in our array, we're moving up a step in this index. Now jmod3 works a little bit differently. Uh, we have uh, the modulo operator is the remainder after division. So what's going to happen there is as we're going across j, it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So we're left with this pattern right here. So now all we need to do is if the total is less than the minimum value, then the minimum value is the total. And we return that minimum value. So let's give this a shot and see what happens. Ooh, compilation error, fun. Oh, right. I need to get rid of that. All right, we passed these sample test cases. Let's see if we can pass these as well. And we did. Awesome. Well, there you have it, guys. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.